Welcome to another Coffee with Stacy. Today I'm going to be talking about things I've made for the baby. So I, a lot of people have been asking, what have you been, you've been knitting? What have you been up to? So I'm going to show you the things that I've been making and that includes sewing. Um, and so it'll be fun. Um, <coughs> it's chilly out here. This is probably the last one of these that's going to be filmed outside this year. It's probably in the 50s, but um, you know, I take the good light while I can get it. So, um, because the first time I filmed a coffee with Stacy, I got multiple reports about how poor the lighting is. And so, um, hate to say it, the poor lighting's gonna be back soon. Um, it's Minnesota, there's not a lot I can do about that. Um, so anyway, uh, what's been going on? Um, I've been traveling a lot recently. I went to Stitches East, which was great in Connecticut, had a wonderful time. Um, and then this past weekend, I was at a wedding of a friend. And so it's been really busy. But in the meantime, I've been getting things ready for the November Kit Club. Yeah, it's October, what's my watch say? 22nd. And um, already in full swing getting ready for the kit club because that's how long it takes to get things ready and i'm working on kits that will be released this friday for this guy um he's one of my favorite special kits he's a christmas owl nelson the christmas owl and i think he's super cute so um i'm busily winding um i got a huge box of green and red and white yarn and I've been winding as fast as I can. So um, those will be up on the site on Friday. Um, I'm hoping, fingers crossed, um, so every kit I've put up basically has sold out. Um, and I know that makes people sad um, because, well, you know, people want kits and then they're not there. Um, and really I'm doing as much as I can. So I'm hoping that even if the Christmas owls sell out, um, I'll have enough time to order more yarn and put up a new stock. So that's my goal. Um, no promises, but that's my goal on the Christmas owls. And, um, and if you don't know, this is very exciting news. I also ordered, I should have brought them with me, but I didn't, Fresh Stitches tattoos. So every shipment that happens between now and the end of the year, we'll have a Fresh Stitches tattoo. Um, you can see they're on, you know, the blog and Instagram and stuff, photos of them, and they're super cute. They're in color, um, and I thought they'd be a nice treat for the holiday season. So let's get started. <clears throat> okay, so, um, people, well, people ask me a lot of questions. Um, one question I've been getting is, have you been making a million things for the baby? And the answer's sort of yes and no. So, um, as I show you things, you'll be like, you are making a million things. So the answer is sort of yes, but <clears throat> I haven't been spending any more time crafting than usual. It's just that instead of making a shawl or a sweater myself, I spend that same amount of time knitting baby sweaters. And since they're so small and hats are so, so small, I can finish like, you know, five in the time it takes to make me a sweater. So I haven't been, I don't feel like I've been putting a lot of effort into it. I've just diverted my normal knitting time into knitting smaller things, which is fun because everyone likes the smaller things. Um, so I just have a pile here and I'm just gonna show you stuff. Um, for the actual patterns, it'd be best if you go to the, my Ravelry projects page and look up the pattern name because honestly, all of these come from books called like Simply Baby, Mod like even my book, Modern Baby, um, Baby's Knits and I can't keep them straight, so, um, but on my Ravelry page, I make sure to put the yarn um, and the name of the pattern and everything like that. So there are a couple items that I stole from my latest book um, to put in, you know, the baby's corner, and they're my favorite. So one is the Argyle Afghan. So I absolutely love this Afghan. This was one, when I was thinking of doing the book, this was like one of the first things I came up with. Um, you know I love teal and orange. That's my thing. <laughs> and lime green comes in third. And um, it's a really fun pattern to make because once you get the hang of, oops, there's a fuzz on it. Once you get the hang of, you know, how the colors go, it's just basically moving over one stitch each time. You know, it's not like a comp, it's not like it's a lion or whatever. Um, you know, it's pretty like rhythmic. And then this is surface crocheted on top. <coughs> so, um, this one's really fun and I like it and it's a nice like crib size. It's not that big 
Um, but whatever. I don't even know if that's in the frame of the camera. It's about 30 inches by 30 inches. Um, and so that's a fun um, little afghan. I know, I know, I didn't really mean to say crib. I know you don't really put a blanket in a crib with a live baby. I've gotten the disclaimers. It's just a crib size, like for a stroller or some other task. Um, <laughs> the other one that's probably my second favorite is um, the asymmetrical basket weave afghan that's in my book. So this one also, probably not far back enough that you can really <laughs> see it, but um, so the normal basket weave pattern is doing front and back post double crochet to make, um, you know, a basket weave like ch -ch -ch -ch. Um, but for this afghan, I changed up the normal squares so that they're, um, you know, just doing something a little different. So the blocks are much bigger. Um, and this is made from Martha Stewart's, um, it's a Lion Brand yarn, so it's Martha Stewart's, can't remember, um, it's, it's her special yarn. So um, Lion Brand has the yarns that you see in the big box stores, and then it has yarns that are only available either online or in their studio stores or their outlet stores. And this one's super nice. It's part wool, part acrylic, and it's just really, it's really smooth. Um, like it has a really round texture to the yarn, and the back post, front post double crochet is incredibly dense. So this afghan, I mean, I don't know if, there's no way you can tell, but it's really heavy. Like it's just dense and heavy, so it'll be really nice and warm, um, and also machine washable. But almost everything in my book is machine washable, obviously. Um, so everyone says to me like, um, ha! I knew it, I was on to you. You came out with a baby book, so I knew you were having a baby, and I kinda hate to be the bearer of bad news, but I also wrote a baby book in 2010. Um, and the truth is just that baby books are super popular because people obviously like making things for babies. Um, so my first book, um, Cuddly Crochet, has been reprinted like, I don't even know, like four or five times. It's been translated into German. Um, <clears throat> like it's really popular and so that's really the reason I wrote another baby book I have to tell you it has not much to do with my personal life but <sighs> the secrets out okay <laughs> so this is my basket of things I'll, I'm just gonna go in random order I'll start with hats <clears throat> um, hats go on the baby's head um, they're kind of important because our house isn't like terribly warm. We live in Minnesota, we go outside, blah, blah, blah. So I picture there being lots of hats. I have lots of hats, the baby should have lots of hats. Tim, I will tell you, has only one hat. I was telling a friend this the other day because um, we were talking about how much we knit for our husbands or don't knit for our husbands. And Tim has one hat that, lit so he came to visit the US in, oh my gosh, it must've been 2004 maybe 2005 and he came whatever started let's pretend it's 2004 he um, came to visit like grad schools um, in the middle of the winter and he stepped off the subway in New York and he went to one of those dudes who sells like stuff um, and he bought a hat for five dollars and he's had the same hat ever since and every time I ask like hey do you want me to make you a new hat and he's like but I already have a hat and I only have one head so Tim only has one hat I have a lot of hats the baby will have a lot of hats um, this hat is from my craftsy course and I really 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 like rainbows it's just a thing about me um, and this is a fun one to make with just scrap yarn so um, I use just some leftover rainbow so I can tell from looking at it that like this is a spud and Chloe sweater this is um, the Vicki Howell sheepish this is um, brown sheep nature spun this is cascade 220 um, super fun rainbow hat basic hat also from my craftsy course just like a normal little hat um, and when you're making hats for babies um, if you follow a pattern or whatnot there's you know they'll list the sizes babies have really really big heads so like the difference between the circumference of the baby's head and the circumference of like my head actually is only a few inches because babies are born with really big heads um, this oh wait I'm gonna group these together hold on wait I'll talk about 
Okay, here we go. We'll talk about these together. So at last week, or two weeks ago, at Stitches East, I um, saw this Indie Dyer, because that's the fun of going to these things, is like Indie Dyers that you don't always see all the time. And she's called White Birch Fiber Arts, and she makes this sock yarn, it's mostly sock yarn, that um, has, uh, it's self-striping, but it has like a rainbow stripe a lot of the times and then like a colored stripe so I bought a skein to make socks for myself that's gray and rainbow striped which I love haven't made them yet but you know I have the skein and then she was selling like not enough of a skein right so like 80 yards like mini skeins and they were perfect for making hats so I got this one isn't it cute so it's pink and rainbow striped super cute and this was one just one of her mini skein things um, so I'm really 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 in love with this hat and this one which is gray and blue because you know I really like aqua too um, so those are both from her and for most of these hat patterns I'm just knitting I'm on size um, I think I'm on two and a half um, which are three millimeter needles cast on 96 stitches knit decrease yeah, it's a hat. Um, hats stretch, so that's pretty good news. Um, and they'll fit. I'm sure they'll fit. Um, <laughs> this hat is from sock yarn that I had left over from a pair of socks um, from Wild Hair Fibers. So you can tell the striping is just different. So like these were made to be self-striping yarns. Um, this yarn was just made with colors. So the stripes, they sort of get organized. Um, but not really. So you can tell, especially in the decreases, the coloring gets off. Um, so that's sort of the difference between an actual self-striping yarn and a yarn that's just kind of dyed to like be rainbowy. Um, but it's still cute, and I really like the bright colors. Um, and of course, because those are sock yarns, they're all super wash, like machine washable. So um, I love those. This hat, I actually made one for me, and then one that matches for the baby. Um, it's from uh, Tin Can Knits has a s collection called the Simple Collection and they're free patterns and they're really amazing. There's one for a sweater, there's one for a hat, a cowl, socks, really amazing. Um, I highly recommend them. And this is the little hat, I think it's called Barley. Um, and this is supposed to be garter stitch but I wasn't paying attention so it's reverse stockinette. But I still think it's really cute. Um, and it's made from shepherd's wool which is one of my favorite yarns. It's incredibly soft. It's not machine washable. To be honest, that doesn't bother me that much. I hand wash a lot of our stuff anyway because, you know, I knit a lot. Um, and also a hat, like, I don't know, how often do you really need to make a hat? I have a few, so if it gets dirty, I'll just pull out a new one. Um, this one, I'm very pleased with. So this, um, the pattern, which I talk about the pattern or the yarn, I don't know. So the pattern is um, a free pattern from Pearl B. It's called Garter Stitch ear flap hat or something because it has the ear flaps um and I really fell in love with it because of the ear flaps like you know I like a hat to have like some ear flap cover your ears you know because sometimes if by the time it covers your ears it's over your eyes it's all confusing um and I found this yarn so Noro you've probably heard of they make silk garden which is a yarn like wool silk and it's usually like self-striping like a long rainbowy thing well this yarn's new and it's um called a self-stripe no it's not called it self-striping silk garden <laughs> solids and so it's the fun color variation that you see within the colors but it's completely solid so i don't really know how well it shows up on the camera but like it's mostly white and there's just like these bitsies of like blues and pinks and greens um, so I absolutely just love the yarn, and the yardage is 110 yards, um, or maybe it's 110 meters, no, it's 100 meters, 110 yards. Um, it's just a 50 gram ball, so it's sort of like half the size of a normal worsted weight ball, um, and I just thought it would be great for a hat. Um, the pattern I changed a little bit, um, the one in the sample has these lines that are, um, I don't know details accents um the decreases like stick out i wasn't so into that um i thought it was a little distracting i just wanted the ear flaps so i just did normal decreases instead of doing that 
I'm going fast because last time when I was talking about my socks, the camera cut off on me. And I know I said these would only be 20 minutes long. And I read a blog post that said like the ideal video length is 20 minutes long. So I'm trying to be ideal. Maybe it'll work. <laughs> um, this hat is um, leftovers. So Shepherd's Wool, one of my favorite yarns, the brown one I showed you earlier, um, makes one called Shepherd's Wool Crazy, which is what she does is she takes the mill ends, so this is like apply, you know, green or brown or whatever, and she plies them together. And they make this incredible yarn. Like you can see um, they're marled, so the two plies are different colors, and they sort of fade into each other. And um, I had just like little bits left over from projects, but I had um, a, a bit like, I don't know, like 30 yards or something that was blue and green, and then one that was gray and green. And so I just made stripes. Um, I don't know, I think it's cute. I wonder if this one's a little short, I think. Um, it's not, I'll show you some other ones, like it's not as deep as some other ones. Um, but then again, like you never know how big the baby's gonna be when it's born, and so, whatever, I just made one of that size, and we'll pretend it'll be fine, right? <laughs> um, I did a little bit of sewing, so, um, babies use a lot of like burp cloth, washcloth-y sort of things, and if you read my blog, you'll know I sew all of our own, um, dishcloths so it's just um bird's eye which is like old school diapering fabric and flannel and they make great washcloths i've made two iterations of them we have dozens i wipe everything with them and then just throw them in the washing machine and so making something like a burp cloth is exactly the same except it's bigger so i've made a bunch of you know they're about 12 in 15 inches by eight inches who knows what that is um and this is the diapering fabric um which ironically i think like not many people use for diapering anymore but that's what it's called and the other side's flannel and so all this is i have instructions on the blog it's a square do 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 around the edges leave an opening turn it inside out top skip ditch do 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 around um and they're super cute and flannel comes in so many different patterns so um i've sort of been i don't know like i love the pattern like look look at him i mean he's just so cute so it's really easy to go into your fabric store and buy like a quarter yard of flannel you know and you don't it's sort of like sock yarn is to knitting and crocheting like you can always use one skein you can always use like a half a yard somewhere um love the monkeys um so oh wait this one hold on hold on that one's good huh and then um, for some of them on the back, I did a terry cloth instead of the flannel. So these are more like heavy duty. Um, I have no idea um, which one I'll like better, but people seem to disagree wildly about whether terry cloth or the bird's eye is better. So I just thought I'd make a little bit of both. Um, and it's the same thing, like one yard of terry cloth did like, I mean, I made like two dozen or more of these. so. Um, a little bit of fabric goes a long way on that one. So those are the burp claws. Um, oh, what do I have? Okay, I have one more sewing thing. Okay, hold on. Ready? Do do. So um, this is a little doll. Um, the patterns from Dolls and Daydreams, and she has a website with PDF downloads. This one happens to be um, one that's available in Joann's as a simplicity pattern. Um, so I got it just because I was there and they were having one of their on sale kind of things. And you know, I can go for a sale. Um, she's super cute. The sample is more like ballerina-y and such, but like, but the skirt like ties on and I thought like at least this, I mean I would, m might take the ribbon off, but this is actually okay for a baby. Um, no plastic eyes, nothing really comes off. Um, she's felt at the top and I like to use either 100% wool or like a 75% wool blend um, felt for like when you're really making something. The felt that you find in the store a lot of times is, um, well sometimes it's ecological bamboo and sometimes it's just acrylic and it's really fine and it comes apart pretty easily like if you pull on it it'll come apart. 
so I don't like to use that kind for an actual sewing project. But I think she's really cute. Um, I learned how to embroider from Wild Olive, so if you're feeling rusty on your embroidery skills, she has great tutorials and patterns, and I think she's really cute. Um, there might be another one of these in the works, but to be honest, sewing's not like my strong suit. I get in the mojo, I get in the mood and like, oh, wouldn't it be so great to have a doll? And then I'm sewing and I'm like, this is a pain in the butt. Um, Cause you have to turn her inside, like I had to turn her inside out like only this much with like a stuffed bun and some legs and it was crazy. So maybe, maybe later. Okay, on to the sweaters. So the first one I knit was this little guy. Um, by Tin Can Knits actually. And it's called the Antler Cardigan and it has these super cute little cables on the um, top. And so I'm not gonna be telling you the names for each one, but I am gonna tell you how it was knit because I'm gonna have a small discussion at the end about how they were knit. Um, everything I'm making, I'm making either three to six months or six to nine months um, because, so, I mean, to be honest, like, Newborn is really, really small, and if you're born as a big baby, you will never wear your newborn things. Um, I was eight pounds, 11 ounces when I was born, and I don't think I wore any newborn things. And if there's an emergency and she's tiny, you know, we have a couple purchased newborn things, but I felt like for knitting, it just wasn't urgent to make, you know, the really tiny things. Um, so my philosophy with knitting is I take the pattern and if I have, I'm using mostly yarn in my stash and I knit the biggest size that I have the yarn to make. So this was two balls, I think, of cas, I think I, yeah, two balls of Cascade 220 in this color and I knit the biggest size that that would make. It's, I think it's like a nine month old one and um, pretty much she'll be able to wear it any time. So, I mean, except for july and august you could put on a little sweater in minnesota so i'm not too worried um the orange buttons because like i said i like orange and aqua um and i really love this one so this was knit um this was knit flat right so the body was knit i mean i knit everything on circulars but the body was knit flat and then um did i seam nope no seam so then the sleeves were knit in the round super cute and then the button band you pick up later to come back and do the button band I really like doing that one this one is one of the ones I can't remember the name of you know simply baby baby simple um, striped sweater is the pattern and this one's really nice so this one's a cardigan right so it buttons down the front so it fits over their head um, this one's a pullover but it has the buttons at the neck because you always want it to be able to pull over their head um, this one was knit completely flat. So the front, easy peasy, like basically a rectangle with some stuff at the top, the sleeves, easy peasy, basically rectangles. Um, so it's really, really easy knitting to do it flat. And then you have to do some seaming to sew it up. So um, it depends how you feel about seaming. It depends how you feel about knitting. Um, I'm gonna talk about one piece I'm working on now and why the next one's gonna be flat. <laughs> and this one's striped because I had at like some orange and some gray and a striped thing is just a really great way to use up extra you know <laughs> this is super cute it's sort of spring like that season exists sometimes um, it's a shrug so this is actually a bigger size I think it's one to two years even and um, it's made from blue sky alpacas cotton worsted it's really really nice yarn so it's not gonna be too hot just a little shrug um, it's knit um, flat and there was seaming in the sleeves and then you pick up around the edges to do this little um, border and it's not meant to close so it'll fit on really nicely and then this one um, is a cabled sweater and also has the buttons at the top and it was knit flat um, this one I did something a little sneaky I did all of the cables and I didn't feel like doing them on the back so the back's actually plain because <laughs> like who's gonna see the back um, I think it still looks fine if I did it again I would um, probably kick out 
let's say three stitches from the whole back panel because cables slurp the fabric in so then when I did the back plane the back slightly bigger um, I was able to block it out a bit um, but like you can tell the seam is here you know and this is the extra fabric that's coming around from the back um, so that's that okay the last thing I have to show you is what I'm working on now so this is a tin can knits pattern um, it's flax so all of the things in the symbol collection are called like oats flax barley um, and it's super cute so it's top down knit in the round and which is I, a way I love to do things usually um, in an adult sweater what I do is I um, put on a nine inch circular and I just like go to town on the sleeves. Um, these little tiny things are too small for the nine inch circular. So I'm on two circulars, which is fine. I'm not gonna complain per se about being on two circulars, but um, usually if I use two circulars like on a pair of socks or something, there's like 30, 40 stitches before I have to move to the next one. The baby sweater is so tiny that I only have like 12 stitches before it's time to go on to the next circular. So I really feel like I spend more time like going on to the next circular. Um, so I'm in a phase where I feel like knitting it flat is better. That phase may change. Um, I don't mind seaming that much really <clears throat> compared to other people who really don't like seaming. So. Um, what I think I'm actually gonna do is, I really love this pattern, um, and I might make another one, and then I would just add a stitch to the sleeve dimension and work it flat and use that stitch up seaming. Because I just think it goes so much faster. Like, I knit the whole body in like a sneeze, and then I've been on this sleeve forever because it takes a really long time to do. And that has nothing to do with the pattern. That's just me not liking switching needles. Um, and also the two circulars thing can be limiting in a way because you have to have two circulars that are the same size, which is a downside. Um, whereas if you knit something flat, you only have to have the one circular. So I'm working on this guy. I'll finish it up. This again, I think is, um, I think it's a one year old size. Um, so she'll wear it sometime. I don't know. Um, so that's what I've been working on. And I guess I said next time I was thinking of doing a sweater that was flat. Um, to be honest, I think like she has enough sweaters. I don't really know how many sweaters you need, but they're really fun to make. And so I keep making them. Um, I don't know how many hats you need. <clears throat> I don't know how many blankets you need. She actually has like five blankets and my mom's gonna make her a blanket because my mom made me a blanket when I was a baby. So my mom has to make her a blanket. So, she has a lot of things. That's okay, right? Like, it's normal. People are excited, people make things. Um, oh, I'll do the obligatory bump photo. Ta-da, wait, am I, sorry. See, I don't have one of those cameras where I can tell what you're seeing. So, ta-da. <laughs> I'm wearing a lot of clothes because it's uh, chilly outside. So, Anyway, that's what I'm knitting for the baby. If you have pattern suggestions or things like that, do put them in the comment section of the blog um, because I, you know, look forward to hearing them. Actually, the, um, you know, some of these patterns were recommended to me by other people, and so it's great to know about them. And um, also, just an administrative note, on the blog you may have noticed that um, there's now a CAPTCHA, so you have to do a little math problem. It's really easy. I didn't let them even put multiplication in um, because of the amount of spam that was coming in. So I'm lucky in that Fresh Stitches is really popular and gets lots of hits. That comes with problems. Um, so I was getting so much spam that the website was shut down twice by my provider because it was using up too much memory on the server. So they were like, you have to fix it or else we're gonna like, get you in trouble. So um, the two, compromises I made was one to put in a CAPTCHA which is a little math problem which is way less obnoxious than those letters that you can never read like is it an R or a P who can tell because it's like stretched out and rotated around um, and the second thing I had to do um, was to disable comments on posts that are older than 60 days old so if you stumble across a blog post that I wrote like a couple years ago you're probably well you can't leave a comment um, 
to be honest, I think that affects very few people. Most um, people are leaving comments on like the newer posts and 60 days gives you time to catch up on your backlog and stuff like that. But I just want to tell you about that in case you're wondering what was going on with the blog. And now that I've done that, I've gone down from thousands of spam comments a day to like 24, which is really great <laughs> news. And so the site will probably not get shut down. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed this coffee with Stacy. I'm a notoriously slow drinker and didn't even finish like the half coffee I brought, but I hope you've finished yours and that you've enjoyed it and I'll see you next time. Bye.